Boatworks Today is a viewer-supported show. To learn more on how you can get involved and watch extended ad-free versions of these videos, please visit our website, boatworkstoday.com, and click on the top of the heading where it says support this show. Thank you. So as a quick recap, in the last video I showed how I dealt with all the, all the cracks and the chips and everything that was going on the surface of these hatches. And this is also the, the same approach that I took with the cabin top. So now we went through and I basically wrapped both, both hatches as well as the cabin top in brand new layer of glass and then I ended the video with a little bit of a teaser. And the painting and the final fairing process is what we're going to be covering today. If you'd like to see that previous video of the glasswork, I'll put a pop-up window in the top right corner of the screen. So to get started, the first thing I'm going to be spraying is a single coat of All Grips 545 primer. This gets mixed one to one and then I typically reduce this about, eh, about 15, 15% with their uh, T006 special epoxy reducer. And what you just saw was me doing a general setup on the for my spray gun as far as getting the air pressure you know right where i want it the, the the width of the fan or the spray pattern as well as the amount of fluid that's coming out of this tip now i'm going to be doing a separate video just strictly on the type of gun that i use and how i specifically go through and set that up so that's a little bit more detail than what i'm able to squeeze into this video but it will be coming This particular clip that you're watching has been sped up about 400% and I'll slow it down here in a second so you can see real time. But when I'm spraying this, basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to hold the gun about 6, inch, six inches off the surface and then I'm overlapping my spray patterns by about 50% on each pass. Basically what I'm looking for is just a full even coat over the entire surface without having any dry streaks. And I'll come back here af shortly afterwards and do any final little touch-ups on areas that maybe look a little dry. But for the most part, I just want to have a nice, wet, even coat over the entire surface. And this is also the same process that I'm using up on this cabin top, except up here, and rather than spraying the entire cabin top, all I'm doing is just focusing on what's going to eventually be the smooth areas. All the areas that I am not priming, I'm going to be rolling over that and turning that into non-skid. So it, I don't need to waste spraying the primer on that large of an area, at least not at this step. So at least for now, the only areas that I'm going to be focusing on are going to be the sides of the cabin, as well as about an inch, one inch uh, perimeter around each of the hatch openings, as well as those little derayed uh, boxes, those elevated boxes up on the top of the deck. If it's not smooth, if it's not going to be smooth, I'm not going to bother spraying it right now. Give you a quick little look over here of how things turned out. Now this is just the first quarter primer. This is the 545 primer. And I am anticipating quite a bit of little pinholes, which you can kind of see in little areas like in here. And up in here, and there. That's fine. That's that's kind of how it goes whenever you take, you know, anything back down to, you know, that raw of fiberglass. You just you're gonna have pinholes. I don't care how careful you are. So then tomorrow I'll be able to come in with their all. I think it's their all quick or all fair. I think it's called their all fair. And I'll come in and I'll spot touch up all these all these little imperfections. And now that it, everything is a consistent color, you know, after being primed, it's a lot easier to see these things. So it, it'll be easy to adjust these tomorrow. So that's kind of the plan. So here's the following morning and I'm applying this all fair over primarily the cockpit and the hatches that are down below. The sides of the cabin and around all of the hatches, they're actually pretty good and didn't really need a whole lot of work, but these hatches needed quite a bit of work. Primarily like right around the, the mounting points because that's where a lot of the glass that I laid up last video, that's where it terminated and there's just a lot of unevenness. So. There's only one downside to laying up all this material, and that's, well, and that's having to knock it back down. Just part of the painting process, you know, a, a paint job is about 95% prep work and actually 5% actual painting. So this is the part that typically takes the longest to get everything just right before you actually, you know, start pulling the trigger on the gun and, and laying down some paint. And since sanding, it really isn't all that sexy to watch. I spared you the boredom of, of going through the cabin top here, but at least this is what it looked like after I finished all the sanding and now I just got to clean it and then I think we're pretty well prepped and, and ready to start laying down some paint. Actually, I take that back. 
The next step is actually sealing all of this filler with another coat of primer. And again, here I'm using 545 and I'm gonna be going over the cabin sides, the cockpit, as well as the hatches twice. So I'm gonna be applying two coats in total and each coat is gonna be about eh, 45 minutes to an hour apart from one another. So with the primer down, I'll typically let these sit for two days, at least uh, you know with the temperature that I keep my building at. And I keep my building around 65 Fahrenheit. So at, at that temp, I usually wait two days before I start to sand or do anything more with this. If you're in a warmer climate, you could probably get away with a one day. If you're in a cooler climate, probably three or four. After a lot of sanding, but this time with 400 grit. Now we're finally able to come back and wipe everything down, tack rag it, and start spraying some paint. And for this, we decided to go with Allcraft 2000 in Clipper White. Now, when I'm mixing this for spraying, it's I mix it typically a little bit different than what is outlined in their manual. Uh, here for spraying, with my gun and the air pressure that I like to work with, I typically mix this two to one to one. So, for example, what that means is I would pour up eight ounces of the actual Allcraft paint, four ounces of their spray catalyst, and then four ounces of their thinner. Typically, I use their T0003, just their standard reducer, just because in the, in the air temps that I work in, in my shop, or that, that I keep my shop, that tends to work out the best. It gives me a, you know, a decent amount of time for the paint to actually flow out, which you only have about five seconds for it to flow out before it starts to tighten up on you. But that, that reducer flashes off fast enough to where it skins over and dust doesn't really have much time to, to settle in before the paint skins. So it, in, in my attempts, that's what works best. And in total, I'm gonna spray three coats, on average, probably 45 minutes apart from one another. All right, well, hopefully you can hear me all right. I've got my um, air system running here to try and air out the building here, but I, uh, I screwed up. <laughs> Simple mistake, uh, although, uh, I, I don't know. Any, any, I was getting everything all prepped here. I was getting all these panels set, and I had two different people stop in at different times, which really kind of broke my train of, or my concentration, broke my train of thought as far as what I needed to get done uh, before I was actually ready for spraying. And the, the, one of the visitors was in between coats. So I just spray, sprayed my first coat and you know, I gotta wait and let it flash off for 20, 20, 30 minutes and then I can come back and do my next coat. Well, as soon as I finished spraying the first coat, somebody stopped in. Just as I was like, hand off the trigger, they pulled up. I'm like, okay. Um, so anyways, talk with them for a little bit and uh, but, you know, by the time they left, then it was time for to, to shoot the second coat. Well, there was one little detail that I overlooked. And, and that's when I'm spraying these materials, uh, when I'm spraying these parts, you know, sometimes I want the fan to be shooting this way. You know, so if I'm going side to side motion, I want my fan pattern to be this way. However, on awkward areas, you know, there are occasions where I'm going to want the fan to be going this way. And as I was spraying these little parts here, you know, it's a lot easier for me to come in, you know, like this, sideways, and hit this face than it would be to try and hold my gun down here with the angle my hoses would hit down here. And it's, just, it's a lot easier to shoot it this way. Well, so on that first coat, the last part that I sprayed, the pattern was this way. Didn't, again, I got distracted and, you know, so I come time to shoot the second coat, I forgot how my pattern was. And when you go to shoot side to side and your pattern is this way, basically all you're doing is dumping a very hard line of paint across a very small section, all the way across. So there we are. And as you can tell, this is the part that I've started with. And I made one pass across here, and I'm thinking, 
something doesn't look right. So I did a little test shot, and sure enough, pattern. So I suppose next time I'm doing something like this, I should just tell them, you know, get out, don't bother me. Because <laughs> that's all it was. I got distracted. Um, somebody, you know, my, my routine got broke. And it's nobody's fault but my own. So it's, you know, it is what it is. But luckily I, I found that on the first pass on the first part for the second coat. So then I corrected it and, well, and then everything else came out fine. I mean, this is all looks great. No runs, no sags. It just looks good. Frustrating. Absolutely frustrating. But, oh well. I've got, uh, I've got one more coat left to spray. And this, uh, this part right here where I had all the, where I had the sags, um, I'm not going to spray that one again. I'm just gonna let it set up and then I'll have to wet sand it all down flat again and then shoot another top coat. But this other hatch cover and then all these uh, lazarette covers, now those I can shoot. So they'll be getting their third and final coat here in about 15 minutes. So anyways, So now here's a good example of what I was talking about with the spray pattern. Now when I first started on this part, I was holding my hand basically you know, straight up or more vertical. Now that I'm getting some of these more detailed and tricky areas, I'm, I'm turning my hand sideways, but I still want my fan pattern to be, I guess, up and down so I'm not lying, or laying in a hard line of paint and getting a bunch of runs. So throughout this process, I'll be rotating this nozzle depending on what kind of situation it is that I'm spraying. Well, well, overall, I guess I'll, I will call that a success. You know, one little hiccup, but again, that's my fault. I take ownership of that one. Um, but other than that one part, uh, everything else turned out great. So um, I'm gonna break everything down and then check out for the night. You guys have a great night. As always, thanks for watching. And if you like this kind of video, give me a thumbs up, share it with your boating friends. And until next time, This has been a Boatworks Today Protection.